In a world where most inventors strive to create ever quicker, more efficient machines, modern day acolytes of the late Rube Goldberg stand proudly apart, as Moraka shows us. Over the past six months, so many have strived to make themselves useful, while others have dedicated themselves to building something that seems kind of useless, which is one way of describing a Rube Goldberg machine. It's an overly complicated machine that does a very simple task, hopefully in a humorous way. Jennifer George is the granddaughter of Rube Goldberg, the Pulitzer Prize winning cartoonist who drew these imaginary comic contraptions. Now Cat B jumps on mouse C, causing lever D to lift lighted candle E which ignites fuse F and sets off bomb G, opening door H very gently. It's very simple. She oversees his legacy and runs annual Rube Goldberg machine competitions, like the one we visited in Columbus, Ohio, seven years ago. Each year, there's a different challenge. Next year's task for 2014 is to zip a zipper. Before the pandemic set in, what was going to be this year's task? This year's task was turn off a light. And little did I know how prophetic it would be right. because by uh, March, everything was shut down. So she moved the contest online with a new challenge. I'm here to invite you, your entire family, and even your family pets to take the Rube Goldberg Bar of Soap Challenge, a 10 to 20 step Rube Goldberg machine that at the end drops a bar of soap into someone's hands. It was very clear to me that as schools were shutting down, we had to provide something. Basically some fun distraction that the whole family could get involved in. Good, clean, pandemic fighting fun. The response was global. We got just shy of 450 submissions. 12 different countries, 39 different states. I mean, it was more successful than we ever imagined. A lot of people writing us that it really helped them get through this period of quarantine. Taking the grand prize, the Round family of Toronto. I want to see the trophy. It doesn't even fit on the screen. <laughs> wow, it doesn't. That's a big trophy fitting for an epic of an apparatus that stretched to every floor of their home. We sped up their video a bit so you can see the whole shebang. The plan was for it to go all the way from the kitchen, down the dining table, up the stairs, back down the stairs, and arrive at the same spot. As for their inspiration... Well, we do have that classic game, Mousetrap. For many, that game was the gateway to Goldberg. And what was so fascinating about it was it was a game with no point. New Yorker writer Adam Gopnik, who wrote the preface to The Art of Rube Goldberg, has a love-hate relationship with the game. Move two spaces. One, two. Start building the mousetrap. The only point was to build the damn machine so you could watch the whole thing interact. It was a very good representation of the essence of Goldbergism, which is elaborate machination to no particular point. Pointlessness that served an important purpose for these families. When we were doing it, we weren't thinking about like how we were stuck inside during quarantine. We were thinking about how fun it was to build the machine. Tess, Jed, and their dad, Brian Silverman, set up shop in their Maryland basement. We won the Animal Award. And the Animal Award is in recognition of? Wonder and us. <laughs> Mom Leslie was glad to be less involved. Honestly, I kind of just enjoyed my hours that I could do my work while they were down in the basement doing their work. <laughs> Not that she wasn't affected by their work. Did you find certain things disappearing? My ladles, my soup ladles. I have three soup ladles. They were gone. I want those back. The Rube Goldberg subculture has its own cult heroes. We love Joseph's machines. They have so many great ideas. They're just insane. Joseph is YouTube sensation Joseph Hersher. When I watch your videos, I'm in suspense. 
And I also laugh. Is that common? I hope it's common. That's sort of my goal. We're laughing because our brain is doing something it hasn't quite done before and it's tickling us in this weird way. And so it's more than just laughter. It's really about opening up your mind a little bit. It's just it's, like... It's failing. failing and failing and failing until you finally get it right. That's right. And, and so... Then, and then it feels like heaven. But contest finalists Tate Houseman and his son Lincoln built their gizmo right here on Earth, in Brooklyn to be exact. How many attempts did it take to get it right? Probably around 100 takes. The only one that we got, and we got it on camera, which is lucky. It feels like there's a lot of life lessons in this. Patience is key. Yes, it worked! But Jennifer George sees another lesson in the continuing legacy of her grandfather. This was something controllable. We can build a Rube Goldberg machine. The virus may be raging outside of our front door, but inside, we've got this covered.